by His Excellency, the Honorable Tandayenko William Moyo, the child president of Zimbabwe. Whereas it is provided by section 63 of the constitution that the child president may at any time prorogue the child parliament and if any such prorogation shall be by proclamation in the Gazette. And whereas it is provided by section 62 of the constitution that the sessions of the child parliament shall be held in such a place and shall begin at such a time as the child president may by proclamation in the Gazette fix. Now therefore, under and by virtue of the powers vested in the child president, as I fall say, I do by this proclamation prolong parliament on Friday the 21st of June 2013 and fix Harara International, Center, Harara International Conference Center as the place at which the 21st session of the Junior Parliament of Zimbabwe shall be held. And at 25 minutes 1 on Saturday the, 25, the 22nd of June 2013, as the time and date of which the 21st session of the Junior Parliament of Zimbabwe shall begin, given under my hand and the public seal of Zimbabwe at Harare this, this 19th day of June in the year of our Lord 2013, N.W. Moyo, Child President, by command of the Child President. I have to inform the House that this morning, today, the Child President of Zimbabwe will declare the causes of his summoning Parliament to meet. Business is now suspended. Your Excellency, 
the President of Republic of Zimbabwe, Comrade Archie Mugabe, the First Lady, Amai Mugabe, the Honorable Vice President, Amai Mjuru, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. M. Tswangirai, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Professor A. Mutambara, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable T. Kope, members of the Junior Parliament here present, the Ministers, the Minister of Youth Development, Indigenization and Empowerment, Comrade Seva Kasukuwera. Zimbabwe Youth Council, National and Provincial Board members here present, Carpet and Ministers here present, Members of Parliament here present, Members of the Diplomatic Community, United Nations Representatives here present, Ladies and Gentlemen, Comrades and Friends. It is my singular honor and privilege to welcome and address this August House. As we mark the annual commemoration of the Day of the African Child. Today, my fellow junior legislators, we gather here to participate in our belated commemoration of the Day of the African Child by holding our 21st session of the Junior Parliament of Zimbabwe. Mr. Speaker, sir, I must hasten to commend the government for establishing this institution as a platform for us children to air our concerns and aspiration. Yes, children. Having held, 20, ha having held 21 session of the Junior Parliament since its establishment in 1991, like in the 21st birthday celebration marked by the presentation of a key of life, I say to the children of Zimbabwe, congratulations, we now have the key to our open doors of opportunity. Why? Because we are the future. We now hold a key to our open desired future, a key to open doors where a child is recognized, not just as an important player in the development of our nation, but then being the most important source of change. Today, we also witness the launch of our national youth policy. Mr. Speaker, sir, it be fitting to have these two grand activities being held on the same day as they complement each other in the empowerment and participation of children and young people. So far, I've stated children so many times, but then why the word children? The commemoration of the Day of the African Child is an occasion to recall the 1976 uprising in Soweto, when a protest by school children, again children, and South Africa again as apartheid inspired education resulted in brutal death and repression of those unarmed young protesters by the police officials. Let us all take this day to reflect on our lived realities of children in Africa. Again, children. I urge all of us to take this occasion to renew our ongoing commitment towards improving the plight of the marginalized vulnerable children in our society. Yes, and again, children. We join the rest of the African continent to commemorate this year of the Day of the African Child under the theme, Eliminating Harmful Social and Cultural Practices Affecting Children, Our Collective Responsibility. You have a part to play. The protection of children from all forms of violence is a human right imperative. Violence still persists in our country against children. Again, children. And young people are only widespread, socially and culturally accepted. It constitutes a harsh reality for a significant number of children, including a form of harmful traditional practices. It is disheartening, Mr. Speaker, sir, that there is still perpetration of harmful social and cultural ills, such as female genital mutilation, early marriages, child trafficking, child labor, the phenomenon, son preference, the vulnerability of the girl child, community perception of children with disability, ineffective birth registration system, child tattooing, and many others. Violent in nature, these social and cultural practices compromise the development and the education of the child, hence affecting the future of this nation. I call upon you, I call upon you my junior government, the senior government, religious leaders, traditional rulers, men and women, boys and girls, to stand as a united force combating harmful social and cultural practices in this community. Zimbabwe is the greatest nation in the whole world. But then its resources doesn't lie in the diamonds, no. It lies with the children. With the, with the 2015 Millennium Development Goals, MDG, deadline drawing close, the next MDG dispensation should see a fast and realization of the rights and welfare of children on the continent and indeed in Zimbabwe. The decade of theoretical children rights is gone. I encourage all stakeholders to put their hands together 
this unity of purpose will contribute to synergy of actions at all levels for the well-being of Zimbabwe. Why? Because it is our collective responsibility. I commend the senior government for coming up with a people-driven constitution whose drafting process includes the input from us children who are the future of tomorrow. The junior parliament of 2011-2012 did an immense work to ensure our concerns and opinions as children, as children's rights are part of the new constitution. The honors are now on us to implement the new constitution as it provides the protection and welfare of children. I urge our traditional leaders to remain resolute and committed to the protection of rights of children, especially the girl child and young people, and the promotion of positive cultural values. The westernization of our young generation is doing more harm than good. Yes, it is. The technological age has taken over. Socialization of children by parents, which has left children exposed to a lot of violent and wayward behaviors as they see it on television. I call upon a greater mobilization of resources, technical and financial, to do a lot of research on these harmful social, cultural practices, especially in hotspots and other religious sects that tend to perpetrate these practices and come up with effective preventative strategies. An examination of the underlying principles can help in better appreciation of this rise in instances of harmful social and traditional practices and make attempts to prevent or reduce their negative impact on this community. This calls for immense effort and commitment by all stakeholders to promote positive cultural practices through community and education and cessation. Will we do this in one day? No, we won't. But then what you don't start will never grow. We, the children of Zimbabwe, commend the government for putting legal frameworks that protect the rights of children. However, more has to be done to ensure the realization of these rights and their implementation. Mr. Speaker, sir, no, no one must be left out in putting effort to address this matter. Government and non-government agencies, judges, lawmakers of both traditional and formal justice system, the police and the community leaders must engage communities into the intergenerational dialogue and generational discussion, such as the family dialogue, education, and religious dialogues to reach out to the communities. By why do I state all these arms? The solution to this cultural harmful, sorry, to the solution to this harmful social and cultural activities doesn't point a finger, no, but it points fingers to all of us because it is upon us to find the solution and to change Zimbabwe today in order for us to have a future tomorrow. In all respect, the opinions and perspective of children should be taken into account in assessing the challenges they confront on a daily basis. Mr. Speaker, sir, I implore this junior August House as we, de as we deliberate on this theme to be acute so that we come up with practical solutions that will help victims of these harmful social and cultural practices affecting children in this world. Specific laws, to, specific laws to address these evils must be, must be put in place and still penalties meted to such abusers of children. Focus must also be drawn to the child, frankly justice system, child adoption of the neglected children, healthcare, education, and reporting system of violated. Efforts must also be put in rehabilitation victims of these harmful social and cultural practices so that they are integrated into the communities without being stigmatized. More free toll lines for health and safety of the house must be put in place. Mr. Speaker, sir, there is, in, is, there is indeed need for a collective responsibility to eliminate these harmful practices because no one man in Zimbabwe can change it, but then all of us can. This effort is not for me alone, your junior president, and my government, or that of the senior, his excellence, comrade Archimba, and his government to deal with, but calls for every individual under the sound of my voice to make a difference. Whether individually, whether family, whether community, organization, all of us have a part to play, and yes, we did. Based on, this under, based on this understanding, Mr. Speaker, sir, I therefore urge my junior government, here present, to remain exemplary, visionary, remarkably sober, as well as anti-mystical icons of true heroism, hinge on the urge to serve other children at whatever cost, at whatever cost, I repeat. My fellow honorable junior MPs, you were elected for this cause, 
Let us direct our efforts and competence on issues that promote children participation and development and also work extra hard for an extra mile for the realization of children's rights. Working with families, churches, politicians, government, non-governmental organization, school, engage, and young people you present in this constituency. Your reward is the emancipation of all children in our beloved Zimbabwe. As I stated earlier, the greatest resource that Zimbabwe has is the children. As I conclude, Mr. Speaker, sir, let me once again thank the senior government of Zimbabwe for giving this opportunity and platform for the children and young people to express ourselves. I also appreciate the effort and financial support by the governmental organization to make this day a reality. Let me, ret let me reiterate that as children of Zimbabwe, we strongly welcome your support and commitment to this endeavor and urge you to continue loving us in that positive way. We thank you. With this said, Mr. Speaker, sir, I hereby declare the 21st session of the junior parliament officially opened. Let us have a fruitful deliberations. I thank you, the attender, Nyabon. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness has appointed the offices of rulers and parliaments for the welfare of society and just government of men, we beseech you to behold with your abundant favor us, your servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such an important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon us here in Parliament assembled, and grant that we may, as in your presence, 
treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to our church. All which we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I now lay upon the table a copy of the speech which His Excellency, the Child President of Zimbabwe, was pleased to deliver to the Children's Parliament. Dear Augustus, please be reminded to switch off your cell phones during the session. Are there any notices of motion? Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, I recognize you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. I make the leave to the House to move the motion eliminating our social and cultural practices affecting children, our collective responsibility. I think. The Honorable Deputy Prime Minister six leaves of the House to move with the motion that eliminating harmful social and cultural practices affecting children, our collective responsibility. Is there any objection? No objection. Agreed to. Madam Deputy Prime Minister, you can move your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. We look at our culture. Then we realize that we are in the first world of transformation, but our culture is remained stuck there in the back. Let me wait. No one around and actually prove time to do it. Did you want to have social and cultural practices? I want to be too so. I still want to tell you what you want. But I want you to tell me what you want. But I want you to tell me what you want. I want you to tell me what you want. Yet, I want you to tell me what you want. We take it as if culture is not going to be able to do the worst thing. People. Yet we don't realize, realize that it's also easy to do the kangaroos because culture here do you look quite the other way. But when we are now, when we spend a good call on Oxy Anti, when I'm scanning, but when we are now, we spend a good call on the tenderest age of 16. Once we are now, we are very careful. Then we send two or less in the Zagata, but we do not take action. In any plan on the good in us, it is for the ability to have for Nenny, but when I was in Babu, we are very free. When I got some Sungiri, we are good to find the most in Babu. Be a Zimbabwean and be part of your culture. Could you do not ask a culture young because culture young not in the road at the tender of 16? Could you do not ask a culture young not to culture young not in the road? I know one room while my name is I move the motion. We should eliminate these harmful social and cultural practices. Thank you. Is there any further debate? I recognize you, Honorable Makabani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take this opportunity that I've been given by Mr. Speaker to directly attack the issue of violence in the social activity in Zimbabwe. I directly attack violence in the form of women, be it domestic violence, be it social violence. We witness these things happening every day. Last year, we said the school lost the boy to a violent act. And then what happened? The story has just dropped. I am saying through your chair, Mr. Speaker, sir, those perpetrators should be heavily punished. Those who beat parents should be heavily punished because they have hurt two lives, the lives of the parents and the lives of the children. I am basically saying, honorable members of parliament, that as the Ogata House, let us say we are saying no to violence because the time has come for us to put our words into action. Honorable members of parliament, it should be known that where two bulls fight is the blood that suffers most. So then today, let us know that where violence is happening in our society, domestic violence, where it is social violence, even at soccer matches, let it be known that we, the children, are suffering most. Nice also, I thank you, honorable members of parliament. Mr. Speaker, I raise my hand. Is there any further debate? Honorable Sharon Banda, I recognize you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Chegotanda, the tender name of 
your own enemies. With the tower of a cultural practice, it will affect the truth to save an honest power. If you are going to go, this is not just a lie. Can I go to Alpha? Alpha? Can we go to Shanti Sire? My name is Pei. Put it on me.
They also have an implementation on the education of Zimbabwe. We see that the education system has come to a point whereby the children which go to school, they just go there and when they finish form six, when they, whether they pass or they fail, when they finish even university, whether they pass or they fail, they become what we term as home defenders. They become nothing in life. And the parents at home, they start questioning what why... Is the point of order, Madam Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker Parliament. Uh, uh, the, the, the speaker... Uh, thank you. Uh, the speaker has uh, offended me. I request that you enjoy his words. Uh, I have a brother who is a home defender. Uh, uh, you have no point of order. Warm your seat, my brother. Order in the house. Order in the house. You can resume. As I was saying, the parents at home or the guardian, they start questioning, why should we send these children to school? Why should we invest when we know that they will not benefit anything? The investments are not bringing returns. I want to thank the government for the BIM program, the best education assistance module, which has helped many children to go to school. But the question is, may the government take a further step in ensuring that these children, they return something from the education they get. The community may also benefit. Children may get the employment they desire after school. Well, so that we are aware that a drought of seconds is looming. With this, I rest my case. Thank you. Is there any further debate? Honorable Manjolo, I recognize you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to um, continue from where the Honorable um, has spoken about disability. I am one of the very few who have managed to go to school and in this school that is too different and who treated very as a disabled person. But there are many people out there, especially in primary schools, even though they go to school, even though they finish A level, or they finish O level. But the fact still reminds us that in towns we see people disabled and we see them selling stuff, it's because of discrimination in, in, in companies and places. Now, how many people have you noticed who actually work who are disabled? That is a problem. And also a fact of the fact that people generally, if they look at disabled people, they just discriminate them like all oh, those people or oh, they. That is how it is. And also moving on, I was suggesting that in, 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 to try to eliminate this problem, we need to have workshops and of making people aware of such factors that people are right, that are there, see people are there. For example, as people are opinions, some people of them are abused because they believe to cure AIDS or to remove AIDS, and it has been AIDS forever. But if you make it aware that people actually know, instead of people being sued at any time, or people being, um, being told bad things, if they, if they know basically in the communities and you spread the word about this, I believe there will be a change in the community. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any further debate? Honorable Fari, I recognize you. Why 
Reyes. Oja, please be reminded that I have our session of arms, disorder in the parliament. I don't hesitate. You go out. Is there any further debate? Sent to school, whereas the boy child is sent to school. 
In such situations, we always assume that this is a culture. But then, in wealthy families whereby the family can afford to send both children, the boy and the girl, to school, this does not happen. It is possible that it is the fear of embarrassment that they cannot send both children, they cannot afford to send both children to school, that they then say it is our culture that we do not send the girl child to school. If the government can make it possible that it is possible to send both children, then the family that decides only to send the boy child, we can then attack and say that this is a cultural practice which is affecting children. Thank you. Is there any further debate? Leader of the House, and the Mercy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I hear by many that this House, this debate, is adjourned. It has been moved that the, hour, the debates do not adjourn. Is there any debate? I put the question that the debates do not adjourn. Those of that opinion who say aye. Aye. Those of the contrary opinion who say no. No. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. The question is accordingly affirmed. The, how the debate is adjourned to a date earlier. To the 24th of June, 2014. The debate is adjourned to the 24th of June, 2013. We have heard them speak, they have said what they think. Right now, I'll call upon the senior honorable ministers to comment on their plights and their deliberations. Thank you to the applicants. Uh, we are going to take on board your views to be seen about uh, Just a few words on this big debate of culture and cultural change. Number one, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you change your culture for yourself. Interrogate your culture as much in identifying what you want to change as much. Don't change your culture at the behest of Westerners or foreign. Second point, when you look at culture, when you look at culture and the things that you don't like in the culture, do a study, ask the elders and say, why was this thing part of our culture? Understand the reason and behavior behind the culture. And then when you do so, you realize that some of the things are innocuous and must be maintained and preserved. But if you do so, you might realize that some of the things are no longer relevant. And then you go ahead and change them. But before you change your practice, make sure this value from the society educate the people first before you change their culture. Thank you very much.